Now we're going to take a look at radian measure and its relationship to the unit circle. Again, this is not new information. We're just going to take a look at how it interacts with the radian measure. So the unit circle has its center at the origin, and it has a radius of 1. The unit circle helps us relate to our trig functions because the radius is found from x squared plus y squared, and we can express sine and cosine with values of x and y as well as tangent. So this is not new. This is the information we already knew. For a sine of something, it's related to y. For a cosine, it's related to x. In the case of the unit circle, it's y over r, where we know the radius is 1. So that's why cosecant is 1 over y. We didn't write y over 1 because when we divide by 1, we don't ever show that. We say 2 not 2 over 1. Cosine is x over 1. Tangent is y over x. So then our three trig functions are going to just be the flip. These are the unit circle values. You can feel free to take a screenshot of this and print it out. It has your degrees, it has your radians, and it has the exact point to help you move a little quicker through that reference angle process. The unit circle is, of course, symmetric. So look at the circle. If I divide it in half this way, it's symmetric. If I divide it in half this way, it's symmetric. That happens because it's centered at the origin and it has a nice even radius of 1. If a point was on the unit circle, AB, that means I have a point in every quadrant. That's all this means. This is quadrant 1. This would be a negative y values, which would be down below. This would be negative x values and values where we have negative x values and negative y values. It's just quadrants. That's all that is. For any point on the unit circle, its reference arc is the shortest arc from the point itself to the x-axis. This is talking about reference angles. If I'm in quadrant 2, 3, or 4, I'm going to have to relate it to a reference angle in quadrant 1 and then follow the convention to get the sign of the final answer. So this is kind of a table from what we've already learned. If I'm at pi over 3, that's in quadrant 1. If you're not sure, pull up this image right here to visit to figure out what quadrants they're in. If I'm at 2 pi over 3, that's going to be a quadrant 2 angle. And this is my y coordinate, so this is my cosine, and this is my sine. Again, cosine is my x value divided by 1, so it would be just negative 1 half. This is my y value, and my sine is always my y value. So we're not having to build these triangles. And again, we're going back to this image, and this is where those points are coming from. Because cosine is x and sine is y, we can replace x squared plus y squared equals 1, which is the Pythagorean theorem, with cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. This is called a Pythagorean identity. We're going to be using this identity a good bit as the course progresses, but now is a great time to point out this is because we said that cosine has the x value, which is really x divided by the radius. The radius is 1, though. Sine is the y value divided by the radius, but the radius is 1. So these two statements are equivalent statements. Now, as we begin to get into graphing, we're going to start looking at the domain and the range. Sine and cosine have a domain of all real values. I could plug anything in, any angle in, between negative infinity and infinity and get an answer. But tangent and secant don't have that behavior because they have values where they're undefined. So y over x is my tangent value. Any time that x value is 0 on the unit circle, which occurs at a couple points, it's going to be undefined. So that's why those domains are not all real numbers. The same is true with cotangent and cosecant. Any time that denominator is 0, we're not going to be able to find the answer. Now, to evaluate a circle function, this is going to start building into the idea of graphing things. There are a couple things that need to happen here. We need to use exact values, which is reference angles, or we could use calculator approximations. Either one is okay. There were a couple things posted in the discussion area about the use of Desmos to graph trig functions. 
that's absolutely a great way to do it, but you do have to make sure you're in radian mode. So whatever calculator you're using needs to be in radian mode and it needs to have a graphing function. As we start finding exact values of these trig values, so we can graph them when we're using radians, we need to make sure our calculator is in radian mode. If you're gonna use sine three pi over two in web 2.0, there's a button at the bottom um, left that says DEG or RAD. You wanna click on RAD and you'll be able to type sine of three pi over two directly into the calculator to get the value of negative one. Now this is an exact angle, so the preference is that we do it by hand. We know that three pi over two, according to that circle image I gave you guys, further up here, if I'm at three pi over two, find the angle and then relate it to the point that it's located at. So once I relate it to that point, it's at zero negative one because it's right on the axis, which means sine is my y value, cosine is my x value, and tangent is my y divided by my x, which in this case is undefined because I can't divide by zero. The same is true for sine and cosine of seven pi over four. This time I put this in here so you could actually see seven pi over four is right here which means that sine is gonna be my y value, cosine is gonna be my x value. So this might even be faster than typing it into the calculator because it's not gonna give you square root of two over two. It's gonna give you some decimal. So this would be a time when even utilizing the calculator, you're not gonna get an answer that's gonna to relate to something in the lab because if you put the decimal approximation in the lab, it's gonna tell you it's wrong. So you wanna make sure you're using the exact values. The same thing is true for um, 5 pi over 3. I'm going to go over to 5 pi over 3. It may or may not work in the calculator. A good thing to do would be to check it in the calculator. And if you get a decimal, know that you're going to have to go to this image. Tangent is going to be <clears throat> my y divided by my x, but it's negative, which means I'm moving backwards, which is going to be the same thing as pi over 3, because here's 5 pi over 3. If I went backwards, it would be related to pi over three. Here is my x value, here is my y value. I'm going to need to divide those. So my x divided by my y, and I'm gonna get square root of three. Um, you could actually write this vertically as square root of three over two divided by one half, and that may help you get there. Or you can remember to divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this would be square root of three over two times two over one. We can use reference angles as well to be able to find values such as the cosine of two pi over three. This is just another way of doing this. If I'm looking at two pi over three, I can look back at my image and that's gonna be related to 120 degrees. 120 degrees is in quadrant two, which means I do 180 minus 120, which is 60, that's my reference angle. But because it's in quadrant two, cosine is negative. That's the image I told you guys to print out a few weeks ago. So my answer would be cosine of 120, I have negative one half, so it's gonna be negative one half. Now, if we're using a calculator, it's extremely helpful if there's not a degree sign and you have a decimal, the calculator is your only option, okay? If there's not a degree symbol, and there is a decimal, the calculator is your only option, but you have to make sure the calculator is in radian mode. So in Web 2.0, you can click on the radian, you can type in cosine of 1.85, and this should be what you get out of it. The same is true for cotangent and secant. Now, some calculators actually have a cotangent and a secant button, and those are going to be useful if it has it. If it doesn't have a cotangent and a secant button, that's okay. We can do one divided by the tangent. In Web 2.0, there is a cotangent, a secant, and a cosecant button. So if that's the calculator you're using, you can just directly type in cotangent 1.3209. A common error with the calculator is really forgetting to swap between degree and radian mode. A lot of times we're swapping modes and as we start problem solving and getting a little further into trig. So we wanna make sure we're adjusting our calculator appropriately. 
Now, what if I want to find the value of the angle? To find the value of the angle, see the cosine s is there, we use what we call the inverse function. So for if it was cosine, notice what I did here. I hit cosine inverse. On the web 2.0 calculator, you're going to have to hit the second function. When you hit second, it brings up a sine, a cosine, a tangent. Those are your inverse trig functions. The ones with the a in front, which when you type them in the calculator, they have the negative one at the top. When I type that in, I get the value 0.2517, which seems really weird, but if I'm in radian mode, it's gonna give me a radian angle. If I'm in degree mode, it's going to give me a degree angle because I just did a radian problem. This is the measurement of my angle in radians. And a lot of times students say, well, that can't be right because that's not an angle. Well, it is, but it's measuring it in radians. The same is true if I want to find where the tangent equals 1. I'm going to do a tan of 1, which is 0.785. Then they found the reference angle for it, and they just checked their work. You don't have to do this step. You should be able to realize and recognize that, yes, that is a radian answer. Now, we're not covering the angle of elevation, so I'm going to move on through here. Here we go. Here's another example of working through things in a calculator. If I know that sine of theta is 0.459, I can do sine inverse to find my radian measurement. So I can go through and do those angle of elevation problems backwards finding those angles. Now this isn't something we're necessarily going to go through in this unit, but I did want to quickly show that.